Okay, shalom, shalom, shalom. Kwam ya sa'ala, koholoyim la yahawa ba'ashim ya washai, ba'ashim, rakaha kodash, double honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well, and they're about a spirit taught us this beautiful truth. Just want to say the water to all the Aki and Menachwa, that's out here sincerely keeping the laws, the statutes and commandments of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh to the best of their ability. This is Yah Hanan Nawaf, just coming at you with another quick lesson, praying that it's edifying by the spirit. And wanted to touch on this um, article in earth.com, agriculture area. It says, uh, vaccinating plants could boost global food security. All right, now who you think is in control of this shit? <laughs> who you think is in control of this? Who, who who do you think that's able to write the laws? If I were to say A, so-called black people. B, so-called uh, uh, Mexicans. C, so-called Jamaicans. D, you know, so-called Haitians. Or, you know, any of these. Who, who do you think is able to really, you know, push something like this right here? So-called white man. He's the one that's in control of the earth. He's the one that's in control of... Uh, uh, the FDA, Food and Drug Administration. He's the one that's in control of, you know, your, all your alphabets. You, you know, your CIA, your FBI's, your, you know, all these things, man. They're in control of all these things. So who do you think would be in power to approve this type of shit where you don't even know? You, you think they're going to put a label on the packaging when you go to the supermarket? They're not going to put no label on them. Uh, uh, yep, this has been... um. This is a uh, uh, vaccinated lettuce or this is vaccinated carrots. You know, uh, you, you, you do have a choice in whether or not you want to put this in your body. No. Nope. <laughs> and, and, and the scripture talks about how. Let me get that real quick. Will we eat our bread to file amongst the Gentiles? Ezekiel 4 and 13. And Yahweh said. And this is for you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. This is why you have absolutely no control over what it is that you eat, what's going into your supermarkets. You don't have no control over no cattle, no chicken, no, you know, um, eggs, no milk, no cheese, no, no actual bread. You know, you, you have no control over anything that you go to the supermarket to eat. Why? Because the so-called white man is running that show. And he can put in it what, whatever he wants to, and you won't even know what's in it. He's the one that's saying, hey, uh, we're going to take the seeds out of grapes. Hey, we're going to take the seeds out of apples. He's the one that's in control of that, man. So it says, Ezekiel 4 and 13, and Yahweh said, even thus shall the children of Israel eat their defiled bread among the Gentiles, whether I will drive them. Where did the Lord drive us to? Mainly a lot of us into the Americas, but he scattered us throughout the four corners of the earth. You so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, you are Israelites. And wherever we are scattered to, and it's not a skin color thing, because our people look like so-called Chinese people, so-called Japanese people, so on and so forth. Every nation on the planet, our people look like them because we've been scattered to all these different continents. And our men have had sex with these women of the other nations. And the seed line goes through the man. So over time, yeah, you're going to lose some skin color. You're going to lose your, you know, your... um facial structure and bone structure things like that but that doesn't mean that that person is not still an israelite because again the seed goes through the father i have to always explain that you know sperm those are actually children that sperm is within that man a so-called white man can never have so-called chinese sperm <laughs> you see whatever comes out of the so-called white man it goes into any other woman on the planet don't make no difference what her nationality is that's exactly what that child is going to be that's where you get a family lineage from. That's where you get a pedigree from. That's where you get people that say, my roots, you know. Or you'll see somebody walking the street, you know, amongst so-called blacks. You know, it depends on what state you live in. Somebody might say, oh, that's your seed. Yeah, that's my little man. You know what I'm saying? You know, because it, it, there was a time where we understood that. But see, in the Americas, they don't teach people that. They, they teach people that they're, they, they're biracial. You can be 10% this, 20% that, the other 70% this. You know, you can be 15% this, 18% that. And you're, you know, this smorgasbord of every damn country on the planet. Then they actually use um, colors as race. There's no such thing as black people or white people. But, but so-called white people, they push that as, this, as if it's a, um, ethnicity for so long that people actually really believe that. So we're dealing with who's the wicked in the planet, man. These people are the wicked that's in the earth. 
Let's get Job 9 and 24 real quick. And we can read into some of it, but the, the title says it all. They'll push that shit right through you so-called blacks, blacks, Hispanics, and Native American neighborhoods, and you won't blink an eye. Because you don't care about the um the processed food that you eat. You know, here you go, you 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 know, you're eating damn ramen noodles every day. Ramen noodles for lunch. A goddamn TV dinner for dinner. All kinds of uh, 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 shit with red number, whatever dye in it, you know, chips and shit all damn day long. Bunch of damn candy with, with whatever's in it. You know, so so our people, man, we really are stuck in these 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 places with the with the enemy, the Gentiles, the heathen, and we're eating whatever they're putting before us. That's why our apostles always say, hey, do your best, man. We know that we're eating our bread to follow amongst the Gentiles, but do your best. You know, try and eat better. You know, try and, you know, uh, uh, you know, the, get the best of the worst at least. Put some greens in your life. You know what I'm saying? Grab a salad. You know what I'm saying? You know, um, you know, try eating more salmon or something like that. You know, um, stay away from the seedless shit for sure. You know, why would you put something seedless in your body? If it don't have no seeds, oh, fuck it. Yeah, I used to love grapes, man. I ain't ate grapes in years. I used to love watermelon. I don't buy them no more because I don't want to get home, cut into it, and there's no damn seeds in it. You know? Then this man is making it illegal for you to even plant gardens, man. Certain places you can't catch um, 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 rainwater. And if you catch rainwater, hell, you're taking a chance anyway because this man's flying through the skies and polluting every goddamn thing with his chemtrails. Anyway, though. Job 9 and 24. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. He covered the faces of the judges thereof. If not, where and who is he? The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. Who's running the earth? Again, we can we can make a whole list of things, you know, a whole list of people out. Okay, you, let's say you got the so-called Chinese. They got their country. They're doing what they're doing. And really, in reality, you know, they're a bunch of damn heathen. They'll eat any fucking thing anyway. But these other countries, they're really only doing what America does. Or, they're you know, they're following in behind Babylon the Great, which is modern-day Rome, which is the so-called white man here in these Americas. And they're pretty much just trying to keep up. They've drunk of that wine of Babylon. Weapon wise, they have no choice but to try, you know, get them some nuclear weapons and try and keep um, these so-called white people from running in on them and, and, and enslaving them. Because that's what so-called white people do. So if China didn't have the military might that they have, so-called white man would have been ran in there. But because they, they, you know, they do have some military might, you know, um, they, they're able to kind of handle and, and, and kind of ward off the so-called white man. The only people on the planet really, you know, well, I say for us anyway, so-called blacks, Hispanics and Native Americans, us Israelites, we don't have no military. We're just scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. And these people are over us and they're taxing us. That's it. You can join their military. But they're in control of the planet, man. That goes for Russia. Russia are so-called white people. Those are Edomites, too. Look at the military might they had. All this little fighting that's going back and forth between them and Ukraine, that's all in fighting. That's, that's white on white crime. That's all that that is. But they, they don't talk about that as being white on white crime. You know? Now, you'll have a place like, say, Israel, for instance. You know, they got the backing of America. The Edomites in Israel, you know, they got the backing of America. So they're able to push around, you know, the the the, the, the so-called brown people over there. You know what I'm saying? The damn Ishmaelites. But you see, those Ishmaelites, though, like Iran, they got a little, they got something to push back with. They got some, they got some weapons. They got a military. They got some, um, um you know, some military might that can ward off. You know, Israel not just running off in into Iran. America not just running off into Iran. See, they know they know how to pick their fights. But the thing that I'm saying is, overall, the so-called white man, he's in control of the earth and he's he's constantly trying to take over territory. And as time goes on and this shit lasts long enough, they'll get into Iran. They'll go ahead and, and do what they have to do to, um, you know, take over that land, too. If you give America or these so-called white people another hundred years, two hundred years, man, yeah, they they conquer it. They'll conquer it all, man, because he has that gift of the sword. You know, he's the perfect weapon maker. It's just like this food right here. He he can use food as a weapon. See, enough people didn't get out here and take his um his 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 jump shot when COV19 was going on. So. Of course, they got to find another way. And they were talking about this during COV-19. I remember towards the end of it, or, you know, when it was kind of phasing out a little bit, I think it was Bill Gates. He was one of the very first ones that was talking about um, putting the, 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 you know, the vax into the food, you know, or the vegetables. 
so everybody can really get their dose. Right? <laughs> I'm telling you, these people are the damn devil, man. But anyway, let's just get a little bit of it. And the comment boards, you know, people are not with this shit, man. Even Esau, the so-called white man, not with this. They're, you know, the, the regular, because they've enslaved their own people. Their own people don't want to deal with them as far as um, on a governmental or elite level, man. It says, in a rapidly growing and changing world, the need to produce enough food for everyone has become more urgent than ever. But why do you make it illegal for people to plant their own gardens? If you were so into people eating, you got all this money. You could easily show people, why don't they give classes on gardening in school? Why not? It's plenty of land. Everybody got a backyard or something. You know? Somebody got something. You, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, why don't they teach you, you know, how to... I mean, you don't even need a um, um, lamb. It's people that grow um, um, certain herbs, spices, and vegetables in their kitchen. You know, they got certain um, devices. I seen, matter of fact, they sell them at Walmart. I was going to grab one. Well, you know, you can kind of grow your own herbs, you know, um, tomatoes, and, you know, little little things like that. You can you can grow shit like that in your in your in your house if you got a balcony you got um um, um gardening bags where you can grow stuff out of bar um gardening bags you can grow cucumbers you can grow um onions and you know just certain shit that you you can grow these things but this man he doesn't want you he makes it illegal for you to actually grow food what kind of shit is that that lets you know this man is the evil damn genius he makes it illegal certain places you you get caught growing a damn garden and see how that turn out for you it says pesticides have played a significant role in enabling large-scale farming, but they come with harmful, harmful side effects on both humans and wildlife. And pests are increasingly developing resistance to them. So they're letting you know straight up. They know that the, the you know their own science and data says that this shit is harmful. They know that. But who's stopping them? Why why isn't the FDA stopping them? Because they all in on the bag, man. It says, to address these challenges and pave the way for sustainable and resilient agriculture, a study published in Frontier in Science implores the potential of induced resistance. This technique, similar to vaccine for plants, activates a plant's immune system so it can respond more effectively to similar stresses in the future. Well, there, there's a such thing as the land Sabbath. Matter of fact, you know what, let's, um, let's Google it. Let's see. In the scriptures, there's a such thing as the land Sabbath, where you let the land rest every seventh year. But these people don't do that, man. That's why you're not yielding anything. And then at the same time, too, you know, uh, the, uh, man, things was growing so much better and, and, and actually had nutrient, nutrients in it before these people start spraying shit, bro. Flying over them with planes, letting that crop dust in and all that. Man, that shit, man. Come on, bro. Let's put in seven year. I'm just going to put in seven year crop Sabbath. That is something that's not kept here, man. And, and they claim to be a Christian nation. Okay, so AI overview. The seven year crop Sabbath, also known as Shemata, is a is a period of agri agricultural rest mandated by the Torah and Judaism. Uh, and, and, and Judaism has nothing to do with that. That wasn't a, a, a Judaism thing. Judaism is a religion. You know, that's a made up religion by them small hat people that's over there in the land claiming to be the, 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 the you know, the Jews, so to speak. They made that religion up. This goes into an actual lifestyle of the Hebrew Israelites. The 12 tribes of Israel, not the 12 tribes of Judah or Jewish. Because Judah is only one tribe. Jew just is just a, a short word for Judah. That's one of the sons of Jacob. He had 12 sons. So this Judaism shit is some bullshit. But it says, during this time, the land is to lie fellow, follow, Salakia. During this time, the land is to lie follow. And all agricultural activities is prohibited. The Bible describes the seven-year crop Sabbath in Leviticus 25, where it is referred to as a Sabbath of complete rest for the land and for the land, a Sabbath for the Lord. So you're supposed to let the land rest every seventh year. Not supposed to do anything to it. You're not supposed to, you know, leave. You got to leave it alone. 
This man, he's crop dusting, he's dishing up the dirt, he's doing this, he's doing that, he's doing this. And then he's just a genetically modified every damn thing. This man is the damn devil, man. We need, we need out of this man's hands. Nobody know what real food tastes like except for um, the elite of these people. That's it. Only the elite are actually, you know, you know, drink real wine, drink real cognac, you know, um, eat real corn, eat real watermelon, eat real, you know, um, you know, real fish, real, you know, because even the damn fish, the water's are tainted. This man is oil spill this, uh, 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 you, you know, a disaster here or disa this motherfucker man got to go. He's even all out in space, man. People, they don't even talk about the space junk that's really out in the atmosphere, man. You can be standing out in your yard and, 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 and a, a fucking satellite to fall out the sky and hit your ass, man. See? This man is the wicked, man. This right here, it says, here are some restrictions that apply during the seventh year crop Sabbath. No planting, pruning, harvesting, or storing of crops. This man, he, 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 a, hey, there's also a law on not gleaming all the fruits or vegetables you let some fall to the ground if it falls to the ground you leave it there for the poor it was like a welfare system of the time this man the so-called white man he's not doing nothing like that he grabbing up everything he's going it, the scriptures talks about don't go back over it you know leave it for the poor you know this man he wants it all man he's so goddamn greedy he don't want you even planting your own garden that is crazy as shit you live in the richest country in the world, but you got what they call homelessness and fucking um, 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 malnutrition, so to speak. Or, or people are just not eating, man. That shouldn't be. All this land out here. These people are sending your kids. They'll, they'll come and arrest you if you don't send your kids to school for 12 years. But not one of those years you're teaching them, well, hey, we're going to um, plant a garden. That should be mandatory. You know, that should that, that's survival. That should be mandatory. How do we plant um, 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 fresh fruits and vegetables and keep clean water? That should be vital in a school. But guess what they're teaching your kids? How to change their gender. So they let you know the wicked are running the earth, man. Right? So it says, um, no gathering grapes for unpruned vines. Only limited cultivation techniques such as watering, fertilizing, weeding, spraying, trimming, and mowing are permitted for preventative purposes. How, how, however... The land's produce can be eaten by anyone, including livestock, wild animals, temporary residents, male, female servants, and hired workers. The seven-year crop Sabbath is a test of religious faith, and the Bible promises bountiful harvest to those who, who observe it. Yeah, of course you're going to get a more bountiful um, harvest because that, you know, that really those, when those fruits and vegetables fall and hit the ground like that, it, it, it decomposes, it goes back into the ground, it goes back into the earth. And it becomes um, um, its own fertilizer. It becomes its own nutrients. Then, of course, the next year you're going to get a better yield. But not that. Hey, this man, he didn't, he, he's like, fuck that. I'm, I don't want to wait. I'm not going to wait no seven years. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to wait a full year. I'm going to go ahead and get this shit now. You know, so now he has destroyed that way of life. Now he has to, you know, come up with these, these different techniques as to how to make shit grow. With all these goddamn these 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 poisons, man, that they put on the food. Because he won't he, he this man. This is the microwave man. This is the man that sold his birthright for, um you know, uh, uh you know. For basically an uncooked dinner. You know, he's the microwave man. He couldn't wait. He actually sold his birthright that that made him profane. Matter of fact, let's. Uh, scripture talks about, um, um you know, hey, let's get it real quick. This man is a, a profane being on the planet, man. And he, he gets to he gets to talking to you about his science, man, and how smart he is. Hebrews 12 and 16. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. Who would sell their birthright? You know how powerful a birthright is? That's your father's inheritance, man. That's your that's your carry on. For you to carry on to your your oldest son, and for your oldest son to carry on to his oldest son, so on and so that's supposed to be something generational. This motherfucker was like, man, fuck, uh, 50, 50 generations from now, I want my shit now. That lets you know what kind of person you're dealing with, man. He's the wicked that the Bible speaks of. Anyway, 
Let's see what else they got in here. Vaccinating plants for resistance. Induced resistance, though studied for decades, is only now beginning to gain traction as a method of crop protection. Come on, bro. At what point did you start needing this? When Esau took over the damn world with his science? Come on, bro. It says, we argue in favor of holistic approach to the crop protections, which combines multiple strategies to deliver tailored solutions. Induced resistance sits in, sits in the heart of such an in integrated approach, said Lee author Bridget Mouchmani. Probably a damn woman. Let's see. As you know, they, 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 women, they, 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 they do some of the, some of the craziest shit themselves too. Maybe I'm tripping. Let's see. Yeah, here we go. Is this her? Let's see. There you go. Look at this goddamn weirdo. This, 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 this big face, big neck. Come on, bro. She's out here telling you about how to how to how to produce healthy foods, bro. And don't the scriptures talks about um, a woman not usurping authority over the man? Come on, bro. Hey, we need we need help, man. We really need out of here. It says currently most crops are protected by pesticides or are bred to have resistant genes. However, pests can out evolve these solutions over time. E induced resistance, by contrast, strengthens a plant's natural defenses offering more sustainable long-lasting protection that could target multiple pests and pathogens simultaneously come on bro see i mean there, there, there was a time when it, all fruits and vegetables are not going to be um, perfect you know when they're growing there of course there's there's insects of course there's you know um they're going to bite off leaves and little stuff here and there but overall it's not tainting your whole crop bro they got to eat too. The goddamn insects got. <laughs> they got to, um, you know, uh, uh, survive too. They, they play a, a part in the ecosystem. But see, Esau's so damn greedy. He wants everything. Nope, I don't want not one goddamn bee bite or flea bite or whatever bite on the. I gotta sell it all. You see, that that's where it all comes from. This all comes from greed. That's why he puts um, coloring and and dyes and. And preservatives and, and shit like that into a lot of stuff to make it last longer. I was just kicking it with this Edomite at the job, and he was telling me about some bread that he had. He's like, "Yeah, man, the bread, you know, I leave it out, and it's just like I don't, I don't know what it is now. It just don't mold anymore. It just doesn't go bad, cause that shit is not real bread. This man is putting all kinds of preservative in the shit, so he. Matter of fact, I think what's that? I think it's out in um." I just seen this the other day and I didn't do anything on it, but it comes back in the spirit. Let's see if we can find it. California, right? And you know, that's a wicked ass place too. Uh, let me see. California. I'm not sure how to word it, but we'll see here. They're not putting uh, expire, expiration dates. Let's put that in. Expiration dates on um the foods anymore, I think. Yep, I ain't even had to type it all in. Let me see. Yep. This was seven days ago. I knew I had seen it. The state Senate and Assembly recently passed a law that will make expiration dates clear for products sold in California. California's new law is set to take effect July 2026. Um, it will it will require a best if used by label, signaling the, the product's peak quality and used by label. For product safety let's see oh no no so so here's another one so this was the one i seen let's go into it a little california just passed a law banning sell by food labels here's why so why would you ban um sell by um food labels you know what i'm saying you don't want people to know if the food and i get it you know what i'm saying you know just because something say um is you know you may have a date say like today the date is on there. This is the last day of the freshness. Of course, you, everybody got something in their refrigerator where, you know, OK, tomorrow I can still eat that shit. It's not like it's, you know, it's just going to go bad right right there. Like it's just like, you know, the time is the clock is ticking down on it of that date. 
12.01 a.m., it's over with, and you got to throw the food. It, it's not like that for everything. You know, they do put further um, dates on certain things. Um, but, okay, it says, let's get to some of the point on this. It says, hopefully other states follow suit. And this is eating well. Here's what you need to know to reduce your own food waste and um, eat safely. Sometimes knowing if your food is still, is still good is a guessing game. Maybe you've rooted around in the fridge and found a bag of recently expired cheese or a pack of chicken with a smeared expiration date. And when those dates don't quite help, you determine if something has, to go, has gone bad. Or if you're just too helpful, too hopeful to believe them, you may have to turn to the quick mold check and sniff test method. What I mean, that's common sense. Then there's trying to decipher labels on food with dates like the sell by and best before labels. It turns out that there is no universally accepted definition of these terms. And that's Esau. That's why he'll give you terms like whole foods or he'll give you terms like all natural and they real trickery. You know, they use real trickery and slippery with their damn words. That's that's um, a person with a double tongue, man. And that's Esau Edom, the so-called white man. He does that the best. He uses all kinds of labels where you thinking that, you know, all is organic. Well, should not everything be fucking organic? You know, you can go to um, 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 some of these places and you think that what you're buying is organic and it's not. It's, it's actually not. When you look at the back of the label, it'll have all kinds of shit in it that organic stuff shouldn't have in it. You know what I'm saying? So they use words to trick people. It says, um, so it's anyone's guess what exactly they mean. And these labels have contributed to tons of food um, waste, literally. But they do got food pantries and things of that nature. But Esau is so goddamn greedy, bro. You know, he 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 would prefer to just let the shit go bad, man, than to just give it to people, you know, to eat, man. The food waste that's going on in America, man, uh, these people are going to really be in for a rude awakening. When they're actually choosing which one of their kids they're going to cook. Because there's going to come a full famine in this place. That's going off into the scriptures. That's one of the things that Yahweh Shah mentioned. And um, Matthew 24. Let's get, we can get that real quick. And you, you pretty much see what's up with that article. We don't have to really stay in there like that. I just remembered that um, that was a law that came out of California. So, you know, generally... The laws that they create in California, they, they normally hit like New York. And then from there, pretty much they hit all the other 48 states, you know. So well, let's get this Matthew 24 because the famines are coming. Matthew 24 and. Um, well, let's get verse three because the disciples, they asked him what would be happening in the end days. Matthew 24, verse three. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and the end of the world? So the disciples asking the Lord straight up, what's going to be popping, right? So you have the, um, the wars, rumors of wars, but I want to jump straight to the point here. We can just, yeah, we can start at verse 6. It says, And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Right. So it says for nations shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom and there shall be famines. See that? And earthquakes. It says um, famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. So it's going to come a point where all this damn food that people be throwing away. They're going to they're, they're going to remember a lot of that shit. They're going to remember. Damn that day I threw away that, you know, because you got people that take one bite out of something. And, 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 and just leave it. Toss it. All this damn food that these kids waste and leave on plates and shit like that. See, right now, you can go to a vending machine and damn near have a meal. You can go to a family dollar or go to a damn Dollar Tree and you can, you can literally pretty much damn near grocery shop. You can go up seriously. Like, you know, so people not, not keeping in mind or they're not looking at the fact that Real famine is going to come and they can't imagine possibly uh, uh, thinking of eating their damn kids or eating their pet. <laughs> but that's coming. And that has happened before because it's biblical. You know, it's biblical. It's, it's, a, it's a few times where um, 
Israelites have eaten their damn children, man. So let's go back to the article, though. I'm going to go back to the original one. Uh, let's see how it works. It says, how induced resistance works. Induced resistance comes in several forms, one of which including plants releasing compounds that extract, that attract predators or harmful herbivores. The most well-known and studied form is defense priming. In defense priming, when a part of the plant is exposed to stress, it partially activates this, the, its defense mechanism. When the plant is attacked again, these defenses are fully triggered. This form of resistance can be passed on to the, the next generation, potentially through epigenetic mechanisms offering a long-term benefit. Uh, anyway, man, sh this shit. Because they, they got a part of it that's saying induced resistance and careful management. The next portion is saying vaccinating plants for healthier food. The next portion is making induced resistance a reality. See, and that's it. And, and when you go into the comment boards, people are not with this shit. People don't want their food to be tampered with. But these are the same people that are, you know, drive through a, a fast food restaurant, you know, and, and, and get a, um, you know, they'll upsize a, 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 a fucking Baconator with, with, with the 32 ounce drink, man. And suck down that, that, that big ass cup of corn syrup. See? But when it comes to stuff like this, you know. But you do, you know, you only Edomites really fuss about shit like this. You do have um Edomites that's um, you know, that are, you know, about that eating, man. You know, I, I will say Esau, they, you know, they're they're about that that eating good, eating fresh, um, you know, because they're they, you know, those are their neighborhoods. They have those type of supermarkets in their neighborhoods. But now it's coming to a point where inflation is kind of pushing them, you know, to kind of, you know, fall back on a lot of store brand bullshit. It's not what it used to be. You even have um, richer or I would say, um, you know, middle class. You even got some um, millionaires, man. They're falling back and they're eating that, you know, for buying their food from place, you know, regular supermarkets, you know. They generally wouldn't even shop at a Walmart. They would go to their, you know, local Whole Foods and, you know, they got the fresh, the freshest, um, Fruits and veggies and the freshest of the meats, the most choice cut meats, you know what I'm saying? Different varieties of milk, cheeses, butter, so you know what I'm saying? It's nothing like the hood. I be seeing, you know, hell, Edomites even be falling over into the hood trying to buy gas because the gas is cheaper. It's still expensive for us, but, you know, for them it's cheaper because they live in neighborhoods, say, for instance, their gas might be a whole dollar more than as, as opposed to in the hood. Let's just say... Uh, uh, their gas is 412 in their neighborhood, and in and, and Jake neighborhood, that shit gonna be um, um under three dollars pretty much in a sense. 312, they're gonna be able to save at least 50 cents, 75 cents to a dollar on that gallon of gas. So they they'll take the chance of coming over. I see them all the time. <laughs> they'll pull right up off a freeway, right in the hood, and you'd be wondering like, the fuck this motherfucker doing over here, suit and tie and all. But he's like, fuck that man. I, we're trying to save uh, or something, man. We gotta, you know, things are. You know, that's the way Esau get to thinking, man. When he's when he's feeling like he's overspending, he 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 feels the inflation. He knows it is happening, trying to save every damn penny he can. You know, anyway, like I said again, it's gonna get real rough out here, and people are not gonna have no choices when it comes to the food. Anyway, um, they're they're just gonna it's gonna famine is gonna hit. We know that famine is gonna hit because we have faith in the scriptures. Yahweh said famine gonna hit. Famine gonna hit. See, these people, they, they just don't, they can't believe it. They can't, it's just like all the other prophecies. They can't, they can't believe that one day America would not have food for them to eat because it's such a prosperous country. No, if your ass is eating out here, you're going to be going to take Esau's chip. And that's what all this is really leading up to. You're going to go and take um, that MOTB, the same way that he was pushing around that, that, that taking a shot a couple of years back. He's going to be pushing that, um, that MOTB, man, that market of beauty and the beast on your ass. And if you want to eat, you want to drink, that's why that scripture says, the, um, um, you know, word is the way that it, is, it words it. Revelation 13. This is what all this type of stuff is leading up to. Revelation 13, 16. And he calls it all both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark 
or the name of the beast or the number of his name. See? He he he's so in control of your food to the point where he can say, hey, we're gonna um, you know, inject this into it. He don't even have to tell you. Now they will throw a little disclaimer out there, but if you miss the news, that's just your fault. They're not gonna um um be obligated to, you know, they because there was a time when they wasn't obligated to put um nothing on um no labels on, on, on certain foods. They, they didn't have to tell you if it was all natural or not, or you know, if it had, you know, peanut allergens or, you know, or whatever the fuck in it. This product was made around um, certain types of nuts. <laughs> you, you know, little labels like that. They didn't. They, there was a time when they didn't do stuff like that. That's just like right now. They talking about um the lab, the, the lab grown meat. That's about to start hitting restaurants. And they were talking about the labeling for that. You know what I'm saying? Like, are they going to let the people no, when they walk up to buy a pack of chicken at the damn supermarket, it, 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 if it was grown in a damn lab or is it, it did it come from an actual chicken? And they don't have to label it because, you know, they were saying that the sales that they're using to grow it in the lab actually comes from chicken. So they can label it chicken. You see, this, this is how Esau gets down, man. But overall, this MOTB, this market of beauty and the beast is coming and... They're going to use that fool anyway to to pull in the people. That's going to be the way that they're really going to get a lot of people to uh, comply because people are going to resist at first. They're going to start getting hungry. Three, four days going to kick in, you know, and once they run through what little food they do have um, on backup, of course, it's going to be complete damn chaos. You know what I'm saying? Um, uh, that second address talks about how um, they're going to be breaking into your damn house for a lack of bread. Let's get that real quick. It's going to be complete chaos, but overall, people are going to um, fall for this shit because they're going to be hungry. And people in America are used to eating three, four, five, six times a day. They're able to go into the, you know, the refrigerator any time of the night. You know, the motherfuckers are constantly eating, you know, got snack cakes, cupcakes, you know, Hershey Kisses bars and, you know, goddamn, um, you know, just shit laying around everywhere, just constantly snacking, 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 snacking. Snacking, <laughs> you know, and that's something that we all want to um, get a grasp on because, you you know, we can all get into that, you know. Wanna, you know, trying to, um, you know, I, I, I'm speaking to myself, putting a, um, something, you know, using discipline, basically, you know, as far as you're eating. Like, OK, I just ate. I'm not even hungry. But you know what I'm saying? You know, I can still snack. That's the type of um, energy that people have in the Americas. You just constantly you know, you're not even hungry, man. A motherfucker fix a whole nother plate. You you full already. You know? You'll go back and you'll get, you know, seconds and you're full, you know, type of deal. You know, that that you you know, people get thirds here, fourths here. It's certain countries, man, where they eat once a day and that's it. That's it. They going to bed. They're getting up tomorrow and they, you know, doing that shit all over again. They don't get to go into the refrigerator at night scratching their damn belly, you know what I'm saying, and sitting down to cake and ice cream and shit at 3 a.m. No, nah, man. Anyway, let's get this, though. Second Ezra is chapter 15. Let me start from verse 14. It says, Woe to the world and them that dwell therein. For the sword and their destruction draw of nigh, and one people shall stand up to fight against another, and swords in their hands. For there shall be sedition among men, and invading one another. They shall not regard their kings nor princes, and the course of their actions shall stand in their power. So it's going to come a point where people are not going to give a fuck about no police, man. When them bellies get to growling, Motherfucker ain't eating three, four days. Trust me, bro. They're not going to care about, um, uh, 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 uh and, and you got to think about it too. I mean, you know, the officers, the only people that's really may going to have some, some, um, food at their disposal are the, the military and, 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 you know, maybe some, um, some police officers or some shit like that. That's kind of holding down the community, so to speak, but that's, that's going to be for them. They're not going to be out here sharing that shit. And they're not, <laughs> you know, they're not going to be, it's mainly going to be your military. They're going to be the ones that's going to be fed, but they're going to have to be chipped themselves to actually even have those jobs. And their, their main task is going to be to guard who's coming in, um, their chipping stations, or so to speak. You know what I'm saying? Who's going to, you know, they're going to be leading you through a pathway. Well, first off, you got to come over here. We're going to need your information. You know, do you have your, you know, your basic ID? Then they're going to, you know, they, 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 they're just going to, you know, dial all that shit into a chip and inject your ass. That's if you want to eat, man. So they, a lot of people going to fall for that. But they're not going to, a lot of these people are not going to regard 
the police. They're not going to regard the military. They're not going to guard regard the mayor, you know, the, the 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 senator and all these different people, man. They're going to be like, man, fuck that. When it's time to eat, people's stomachs growling, their kids are screaming and crying. Nah, man, it it's going to be all out chaos. Okay, but it says a man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able. For because of their pride, the city shall be troubled and the houses shall be destroyed and men shall be afraid. A man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall destroy their houses with the sword and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread and for great tribulation. See that? That lack of bread is going to be one of them, but great tribulation is going to be even worse. You know, that Jacob's trouble, man. You got to imagine being in a, in a situation like that and, and, and everything is just chaotic, man. You don't know where your next is coming from. You know, you, you, you just trying to find shelter for the night. All this comfortability that, that these Americans have, that shit going to be over with. You're going to either be buried, barricaded in your house and starve to death anyway. Your house is going to become your, your, your tomb. Or you're going to try and get out here and try and get you something to eat, which is going to be, um, um, you know, dangerous as hell. Because people are not going to regard your ass as being a human or a citizen anymore. They're just going to be looking at you like possible food. Your ass could end up, man, on a grill. You've seen the movies like The Road, man. You know? So, it's getting grimy out here, man. Let's get a little bit of this and I'll end out. It says, according to the 2021 United Nations report, about 17% of food produced globally each year gets tossed. That's a lot of food. It says that's about 1.03 billion tons of food each year. You see that? Because people are taking what they have for granted, man. And the Food and Drug Administration reports that 30 to 40 percent of the food in the United States goes uneaten as much as 20 pounds per person per month. And confusion over food labeling accounts for 20 percent of that food waste. Apparently, the state legislator of California has grown tired of the guessing game and the estimated six million tons of unexpired food that gets wasted in the state each year. The state Senate and Assembly recently passed a law that will make expiration dates clear for products sold in California. Okay. Yeah, so it, it's an article that's going on and on, you know. Yeah, that labeling, man. Hey. It is what it is. I mean, I, I don't like to waste food personally. I kind of try and, you know, run it as I'm getting it, so to speak. You know what I'm saying? You know, and it's just me. I'm on a dolo, so I don't really, you know, I don't, you know, I'm not cooking for nobody but me overall. And I don't eat out at no damn restaurants. I'm, I'm, I'm you know, I'm not into that shit. But, you know, I pretty much grab the same things every, every week. When I run out of it, you know, I have a list. I need this. I ran out of that. I need this. I ran out of that. And that's, you know, that's just kind of like how I do it. And when I see certain things, you know what I'm saying? Well, you know, well, you may not have a taste for it, but you know that at, at eventually, all right, it's been here for a sec. Let me go ahead and, you know, make it up or cook it up before it goes bad, even though you may have a taste for something else. See, all that stuff that people do, oh, well, I don't have no taste for that. And I don't eat leftovers. I know people that, that they don't eat leftovers. I don't eat leftovers. You don't eat leftovers. What the fuck you mean you'll eat leftovers? Sometimes leftovers is far better. Um... The day after, then they are the day of, uh, uh, of you freshly cooking it. I love leftovers. <laughs> Shit, fuck that. Food going in the trash? Are you fucking kidding me? I mean, you know what I'm saying? That, see, when, once you get to a point of you knowing about, you know, your, you know, your level of eating, you're going to be like, I'm only going to cook this amount. You know, because I were, you know, people in America, they're, they're generally used to overeating. They overindulge. You know, it's just uh, everything is big. I mean, look at your fast food, man. Look at the shit that people go. You go to a damn fat. Well, now they're, you know, they got what they call shrinkflation. But, you know, before, man, you can go somewhere, man, and 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 and, and, and just one sitting, a person will be done eight, three, to, three, four thousand damn calories, man. <laughs> just one sitting. Like, damn, you going to eat all that? You're not going to put up some for later? But you got people that's actually, you know, they, I don't eat leftovers. I know plenty of people like that, mainly women. But guess what? It's going to come a point where you're going you're gonna to remember every damn leftover your ass threw away. Trust me on that, man. Anyway, 
I'm going to end off there. I didn't want to keep this long. I know I don't went past what I was going to do, but that's the spirit, man. We got to flow in the spirit. We can't quench the spirit. We have to go ahead and bring out what the spirit wants to come out. But, hey, this, this shit right here, we're eating our bread to file amongst the Gentiles, and there's nothing we can really do about it. You know, all we can do is just pray to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh to bless the food. Pray over the food, man. Pray to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh for what you, you should shop for. I mean, I throw, I throw prayers like that up all the time. Well, Yahweh, you know, what do you, you know, want me to grab? And you might be rolling down the aisle and, and, and you know, or, you know, the Lord will show you. Like, oh, yep, you can grab that right there. You can grab that. That's fresh. That's in season, so to speak. You know what I'm saying? You know, you know, and, and just pray over it, man. You know what I'm saying? Because the Lord also said that, roughly paraphrasing, you know, um, um, we would eat poison and not die. <laughs> so you had to have faith in Yahweh about Shimei was shy, man. You don't think the Lord has the, 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 um, the power to remove any of Esau's bullshit? Or sometimes you may think like, well, damn, you know, I scorched that. It might be something that the Lord didn't even want your ass to have. You just throw that shit on out, man. <laughs> I burnt some damn beans the other day. I was kind of pissed. I left the shit on and, you know, then, you know, didn't have enough water in it. Well, the water just, I don't know how this shit just, it just went so quick. Next thing I knew, I was kind of smelling something. I'm like, damn. You know, it kind of, you know, that scorch on the bottom of the, but it had, you know, it, it done it so bold to the point where it was just like, well, it was no salvation on it. I could have ate the shit, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, of course, you don't, you know, you don't want that burnt, scorched ass taste. But, I, you know, I just thought like, well, maybe it was something that the Lord just didn't want me to have, man. You know what I'm saying? Maybe it was something up with him. You know? Because it was actually something new that I was trying. But anyway, I'm going to end off there, man. I pray that the lesson was edifying with that. Kwame Yashala and the Baba Ball. AJ, yeah, again, man, pray. Shalom.